gentlemen, it's Blind Days, and here is your host, Miss Scylla Black. must come to an end oh. and you know blind date is no exception because oh. this is the last show in the present series oh. <laughs> but cheer up But stop it, you fool, stop it. We will be back later this year. Meanwhile, let's meet three smashing girls, each hoping to find romance on a blind date. We have Ramona from Vancouver, <laughs> Eva from Tyneside, and Joe from Basingstoke. <laughs> Hello, Scylla. Oh, that lovely accent there. Now, you're from Canada, you're from yes. Vancouver, and we're all dying to know, what are you doing over here? Well, I've been here about two and a half years, and I work for a Canadian stock brokerage firm, one that I used to work for in Vancouver. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> <laughs> you sound like all those people on the film, doesn't you? It's absolutely wonderful. Now, but you do, you have a dual passport. Yes, I do. My dad was born in London, so I'm allowed to stay here for a while. But what about men? I mean, you have a theory about men. In fact, oh. you've got a 90s joke about men, haven't I you, so. Ramona? Am I allowed to say it? Well, I don't know. We haven't heard it yet. Is she allowed <laughs> to say it? <laughs> Go on, Ramona. Well, Scylla, there are three people stuck in a lift. Mm -hmm. The perfect woman, the perfect man, and Father Christmas. There's a five-pound note on the floor. Who bends down to pick it up? I don't know. Who does bend down to pick that five-pound note up? The perfect woman, of course, because the other two don't exist. We've got a lot, a lot of girls in tonight's audience, <laughs> and they all agree with you. Now, there is a softer side to you, Ramona. I, I brought a rose tonight for the picker. Yeah. So I have a romantic side of me as well. So what if you don't get picked tonight? Well, I will still give it to him anyways. Ah. <laughs> oh, you sweet Canadian. Romantic you. Enjoy Blind Thank Date. You, I'm Silla. so pleased that you're over in our Thanks. country. Enjoy Blind Date tonight. Hello, Eva. Hello, Scylla. Now, Eva, what do you do, Chuck? Well, I purchase in Clark for a local northeast company. What do you purchase as a well, clerk? I actually um, purchase stationery from different companies. <laughs> and we make sure that all our clients get the stationery on time. Well, and you've had a lot of jobs, haven't you, Eva? I have, yes, I've had a few. And you've had to sell advertising for your local paper. I did, yes. Um, some funny adverts in that paper. There was, uh, there was some strange adverts. There was a person who wanted to sell a toilet seat. Oh, what a bummer. <laughs> But your other job, I mean, you trained as a beauty therapist, yes? I did, yes, I've had lots of jobs. Um, but you um, weren't quite successful in that job, were well, you, Eva? No, I actually, um, when I was training, I had a, a lovely client, a lovely little old lady, and she used to come in every week for her facials. Ah. So I was doing a normal facial, and we actually had new How products. How old was this lovely old lady? Can she I was stop about, you She was about 60, 65, with her lovely little white hair, you know, like a nice little granny. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I took the lady's face mask off, and because I'd used a new product, her face was actually bright blue. Oh. <laughs> and you ended up with a red face. Just a little, just a bit. Just a little bit. Well, I hope you don't end up with a red face tonight. Enjoy blind date, Thanks. Eva. You're a lovely Thanks. girl. You really are. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Hello, Stella. Hiya. Hiya. What do you do? <laughs> oh, look there. You see, the lads all like that. That top. You're looking stunning tonight. Thank you. What so do you do, Joe? I work for a computer company, oh. um, d which distribute PC components and peripherals. Um, peripherals. peripherals. <laughs> That's what you eat, don't you? Those chocolate things. 
No, I sell chips, basically. You sell chips? Yes. Even better, even better. Work for a chip shop. Let me have a look at your hands. Never mind your job, you know. Yeah. Oh, look. Are they your own nails you're wearing today? They are now, yes. Because they have caused you a little bit of bother, haven't they, in the past? In the past, they have, yes. What happened? Well, I used to have a really bad habit of biting my nails. Um, uh, so I used to wear falsies. Okay. <laughs> you're not tonight, though, are you, dear? No, they're real. <laughs> and one night I went out to a club with my friend. Yes. Um, during the night, my nails just sort of disappeared, yeah, which I was quite used to. Um, but towards the end of the night, I wasn't getting approached by men, oh. and I wasn't really pulling anybody. Oh. So I sort of wondered why. <laughs> But when I got home and looked in the mirror, I realised I must have been putting my hands through my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I had all these nails in my hair. Oh, <laughs> oh well, you look more cuticle than cute, did you? That's <laughs> you did. Enjoy blind date. I shall see you all in a mo. See you later, girls. And here's the lad they're hoping for. His name's Charlie, and he's from Liverpool. Yes, come in, Charlie. what you do out there? Uh, I'm actually a trainee chartered accountant. Oh. <laughs> for, for a medium-sized firm in Liverpool. Oh, and you're very proud of it. I am. I am, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you earning a few, Bob? Because, you know, there are a few scallies up there uh, at the minute. There are a few, and maybe not as much as I'd like to be earning, but hopefully in a few years, yes. Well, I hope so, too. I've never <laughs> met <laughs> before. Um. I've never met one as posh as you, Charlie. <laughs> So, may I say, Liverpool's changed a lot now since you were there, I say. <laughs> well, what you're saying, Charlie, that yeah. you've gotten rid of all the rough that. and that's me. <laughs> that's not nice, Charlie. But now, let's talk about you and what you do, because, I mean, you are very much a big Duran Duran fan, aren't you? Uh, I am, I must confess, I am. Yes. In fact, do you belong to the fan club, don't you, Chuck? I do, I've been a member now for three years or so with the Duran Duran fan club. Yeah. <laughs> And is it true that you used to model yourself on <laughs> Simon, <laughs> Simon Le Bon, who's got, I think is gorgeous. There's only one Simon Le Bon, but you, you wanted to be him. Yeah, Simon's cool. He dresses well. He yeah, is cool. Like he is leather cool. Leather trousers, that kind of thing. Yes. So you, yes. <laughs> and you know, it gets worse than this, because you love Miami Vice as well, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> and you've got 30 hours of Miami Vice on tape. And you adore Don Johnson, is that right? A small, a small claim to fame, yes, is my Miami Vice fetish. Uh, <laughs> and did you wear the, you know, the Don Johnson suits, the, the linen suits with the sleeves rolled up? Linen suits, um, purple sort of yeah. pink T-shirts. Right. Espadrilles. Espadrilles. Ray-Ban sunglasses. No socks. No socks. No socks weren't allowed. Socks. No. Ah, oh, what a shame. <laughs> but Charlie, tell us, who have you come as tonight? <laughs> This, this is be... your right Charlie look, well, is it? <laughs> this is obviously a mix between an accountant and Don Johnson and Simon Le Bon <laughs> in the 90s. Now, you've got three questions there, Charlie. I have. I can only joke like this because you're from <laughs> Liverpool. I can really only joke like this. Now, fire away with your first one. Uh, good evening, ladies. Good Hi, evening, Charlie. Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Hi, right. This is... <laughs> My uh, first question, uh, and it will go to number one. I fancy myself as a real 80s kid. <laughs> <laughs> I love everything from the new romantics to Miami Vice. What did you love about the 80s, and why? Hi, Charlie. Hi. Do you remember the love boat? Uh, I have seen it maybe <laughs> once or twice. Well, if you're looking for something exciting and new, Choose me tonight, and I'll be waiting for you. Ooh. Okay, uh, I'll have the same question to 
Number two, please. Hello, Charlie. Hi. <laughs> Charlie, the thing I liked most about the 80s was the board game Frustration. Because, <laughs> Charlie, when I pop up behind that screen, you will not be bored and you will definitely not be frustrated. <laughs> uh, and same question to you, number three, please. Good evening, Charlie. Hi. Hi. The thing that sticks in my mind about the 80s is that I liked Duran Duran. <laughs> so if you're hungry like the wolf tonight, don't save me until the morning after. Okay, uh, question two. Uh, to number two. I race catamarans with my brother. Uh, both on a national circuit and in European Championships. <laughs> this requires understanding and teamwork. If we were to form a team, in what field would we excel? Well, Charlie, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to try the three-legged race with you. <laughs> if you held me tight and we got the timing right, you would definitely not want to hop it. <laughs> And the same question to number three, please. Hello again, Charlie. Hi. Um, I think the field that we would excel in would be the field that is behind my house. <laughs> <laughs> so pick me tonight and let's make hay while the sun shines. Yeah, Okay, and the same question to number one, please. Well, Charlie, if you'll be my corner man, we could try boxing. And if you promise not to throw in the towel on our date, we could have a lethal combination. Uh, third question. I fancy myself as a bit of a James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> I have the charm, the toys, and that arrogant attitude. Who told you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> we all love our mums, don't we? But uh, what I don't have is that Bond girl. If you were to be my James Bond girl, then what would you be called and why? <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Well, Charlie, I would have to be your Madonna. Not just because of my looks, but also because of my attitude. If we went on a holiday, I'd promise not to be a material girl, and I would be crazy for you. Uh. And same question to number two, please. <laughs> Charlie, I'd have to be Miss Goodnight, because if you chose me for your date, you would definitely not want to say that to me at the end of the date. Mm -hmm. And finally to number three, please. Okay, Charlie. Um, I think that I would have to be called Miss Leather Galore. <laughs> because of the leather trousers I'm wearing tonight. <laughs> But don't worry, I won't be licensed to kill, just licensed to thrill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there you have it, Charlie. I wonder who's going to be your darling tonight, Charlie. Don't tell us just yet, because here's our Graham with a quick recap. Well, Charlie, will your blind date be exciting number one? The Madonna who thinks that with you in her corner, she'd be a real knockout. <laughs> or will it be racy number two? Tie yourself to her and you'll be sure of a real good night. 
shaken and stirred. <laughs> or how about leather-loving number three? She wants to make hay with you while the sun shines. Let's hope neither of you gets the needle. But the decision is yours. So, Charlie, who's it going to be one, two, or three? Uh, number three. Reply that swayed well you. It, it well was, been. but how could you turn down number one? I mean, she's all the way from Canada. Aww. Yes, could you tell? Have you? Yeah. Yes. Well, you won't go again because you turned <laughs> her down. <laughs> you turned down number one. That was Ramona from Vancouver. Come in, Ramona. And that was our Eva from Tyneside. Come in, Eva. Oh, and two kisses for our Eva. Yeah. But hey, here it is. You chose for your blind date this evening. Number three. And that was our Joe from Basingstoke. Come in, Joe! <laughs> well, yeah. A popular, popular choice, I think. What do you think? Do you like Duran Duran? Yeah. Yes, yes, that. you did, you said. Yes, what do you I think of this funny. red satin thing? <laughs> trousers that would go with it actually. Oh, well he thought he had some trousers that way. <laughs> <laughs> and you do match. I wonder where you're going on your blind date. Who's going to choose? Make Jay it a choose. good one. Thank you. Joe can choose. Come on, be lucky. Come on, Joe. <laughs> that one. Go on, what does it say? Oh, my God. <gasps> a date in Colorado? Yes! You're flying off to the Rocky Mountains to visit Steamboat, the resort. That's a resort, oh. apparently. I've never heard of that. Have you heard of Steamboat, no. the resort? Well, they call it Ski Town. Do you ski? No, I haven't before, no. You will. <laughs> Do you ski? Yes, it's the best snow in the world because it's me. very powdery. It's lovely. You can learn in a week. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the Ski Town. You'll be going on the slopes there. You'll take a hot air balloon flight. <laughs> And of course, you'd be skiing, skiing, and skiing, <laughs> and some more skiing. That's what it says, but it'll be fabulous. Just make sure you come back soon and tell us how you get on. Will you do that? We will. I'm we so will. pleased, especially you coming Please. from Liverpool, going to Colorado. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie and Joe. See you soon. minutes to see how Ted and Debbie enjoyed their date in Switzerland. And here's the moment they met last week. Here's your blind date. You chose number three. That was Debbie from Dorset. Come in, Debbie. <laughs> Okay, now, just relax. <laughs> Everything seems fine. Oh, good. That's a relief. It'll come with three years free servicing, including labor and parts. Uh-huh. Let's see now. You've got three years total AA cover and three years comprehensive warranty. Oh, right. And six years anti-corrosion warranty. Yes, there's nothing to worry about at all. In the last year alone, Dayu gave away over 12,000 free routine services and 49,000 years of warranties and AA cover. When was the last time you were this well looked after? All this peace of mind, that'll be the day you. The Olympic Games. Think of it as a business, with branch offices in 197 countries around the world. Here and here, even way down here. 
Now think of all the documents and packages it takes to run this business worldwide. If this were your business, who would you trust to keep your branch in Buenos Aires up to speed? UPS, the official express delivery company of the 1996 Olympic Games. Code name. Destination. Your next encounter. Launch pad. Now, a Disneyland Paris, Space Mountain, and more than 40 attractions and shows for just 19 pounds for kids, 25 pounds for adults. Todavía no has oído hablar del nuevo software de reconocimiento de voz de IBM. Vos simplemente le hablas y te lo escribe automáticamente. Estoy anonadada. Do you believe in giving money to strangers? No. Then you might like to know that unlike many insurance companies, at United Friendly, we always come round to see you and discuss exactly what you want. All together now. United Friendly, person to person. You get a lot as standard on a day, you. There's ABS, power steering, side impact protection, driver's airbag, three years free servicing with a free courtesy car, three years warranty, and three years total AA cover. We can pass all these extras on to you because in the last year alone, we've saved millions of pounds by not paying for one particular extra. Dealers. A car company that doesn't use dealers, that'll be the day, you. and Debbie. Now let's join Ted and Debbie having fun on the slopes in Switzerland. On behalf of Swiss Air, have a nice date. Oh, Thank thanks you. Thanks very much. Cheers. We'll soon be on the piste. Stick to my curling tongs, by you. It's not, it's not going to work. <laughs> Titless. Pardon. Yeah. That's what the mountain's called. Oh, is it? <laughs> okay, thanks for a nice day. Oh, thank you. Well, all those winter sports brought a glow to their cheeks, <laughs> but I wonder if their date brought a glow to their hearts. Shall we find out? I think when the screen went back, I thought Debbie was definitely the pick of the bunch. I was quite happy, quite happy. She's a pretty girl. 
Yeah, when the screen went back and I first saw Ted, it, um, yeah, I thought it was quite good looking. It didn't make me go weak at the knees or anything, but yeah, it was all right. When the screen went back, Debbie sort of, I don't think she was unimpressed, but I don't think she was too impressed. And as the date went on, it sort of developed into sort of mild disdain. Not sort of out and out, no, but not yes either, I think. Ted is a public school boy, and I expected him to be you know, full of breeding, quite sophisticated, and very, and very much gentleman, but he wasn't. He was very scruffy, very laddish. <laughs> and um, that's good out of pub of his mates, which is fine, but it's not what I expected. It was an unfortunate uh, state of affairs that uh, Debbie and I probably had the best fun on the date when we were not together. Like the skiing, for instance, we were at, at such different levels that she was down here that on the mountain and I was up at the top of the mountain and she enjoyed that day and I certainly enjoyed that day but we were half a mile apart most of the time. When we were skiing it didn't worry me that Ted went off and done his own thing because he could ski and I couldn't but I wasn't really that bothered. I was glad to see the back of him. Early on in the date and indeed all the way through the day Debbie did say I think good five or six times that I wish I could go home or words that out of fact um, which was a bit of a kick, <laughs> or a bit of a bit of a downer, if you like. Uh, the date was only actually three days long. If it had been any longer, I think I'd probably been quite glad to get home. I think Debbie would have would describe me as a dull sports freak, despite my best efforts not to be on both counts. If I had to tell my um, mates about Ted now, I'd say it was all right. It's a bit boring. I do wonder why Debbie came on fine date. Um, if it's fair enough not looking for a romance, but she didn't seem to really dive in at the deep end. I don't really know Ted very well, and I haven't got any interest in getting to know him any better. Looking back on the days, I have, I really have no idea what sort of guy Debbie likes. Um, apart from the fact it's not me. Uh, I, uh, having said that, I know very little about Debbie at all, in any direction. I like a bloke who's very funny, naturally. Um, quite a charmer, good looking, tense, good looking, blessed by it. Oh, oh Debbie, <laughs> Debbie, Debbie, how could you say all those terrible things? Ted, what did you do wrong? Just about everything, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Were you expecting that? That little piece of film there? I think I was expecting a little bit of it, so yes, I think. Uh, but what can I say? Uh, I... What can I say? <laughs> did, did, what kind of effort did you make to please Debbie for a start? I mean, what, what kind of things well, did you do? I, I did try and make a laugh. I sort of thought that was the best way forward. I think the romance was clearly not going to happen from very early on. And so I tried to chat her up, you know, anyway. And uh, she would just <laughs> spend her time looking over my shoulder or starting a conversation with a person next to her or just get up and leave. <laughs> so... Debbie, what, what, is, what is wrong with our Teddy? Hey, I mean, because nice. so we picked made... him to come on Blind Date as a picker, because yeah. remember this, folks, he did pick you, Debbie. Yeah. Uh, so we obviously thought he had what it takes to be a picker. What didn't he have for you? Well, I don't really think he made that much effort, like... The way he dressed or anything like that, he didn't. <laughs> it was like the first, the first day we went out for um, a meal, the first night we got there, and everyone else got all dressed up, and I got all dressed up, and Ted turned up in what he'd been wearing all day. <laughs> <laughs> but Ted, I, you know, I, I get a feeling that you, you're quite upset by that film. You weren't quite expecting. I wasn't quite expecting the lashing I just got. <laughs> <laughs> I must no. confess to that, but. Uh... I don't know. I, I, went, I went to school. I went to a public school. I didn't go to an institution for the cloning of young men. No. <laughs> well, you hear? They all love them out there, Debbie. <laughs> Thank you so much. Are you glad you came on Blind Day? Yeah, I am. Are you really? <laughs> Sounded. The few times Debbie did actually start a conversation, she generally started, go, I wish I could go home, or something like that, and I just... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did try, I did try, I mean... Well, now that you are home, are you going to bother to see each other again? <laughs> <laughs> probably not. <laughs> I think that's probably fair, yeah.
Probably not. Probably fair. Well, don't, don't get another be lashing. too gutted, because I can promise you, Ted, that after this show, you'll get a million <laughs> letters in fan mail. <laughs> Debbie, I have to say, I don't know what idea of fun you think is in a guy, but, I mean, God, he's got to be Superman. He really has. <laughs> I wish you well for the future. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, Ted and Debbie. <laughs> well, we're going to take another break right now, but we will be back to meet the lovely girl who has to choose one of these three fabulous fellas. We've got Andy from Cheshire, James from Hampshire, and Dan from County Antrim. See you in a couple of minutes. In the last year, we've delivered over 15,000 days. But we didn't sell one of them. Because Deu only has customer advisors who won't approach you unless you ask them to. So, if you want, you can go in and out of a Deu showroom without anyone ever crossing your path except to say hello. A car company that only has non-commissioned advisors? That'll be the day. Thank you. Hello and welcome back. Well, let's go and chat of our three lads, Andy, James and Dan. There they are. Sir. Well, you're looking very tanned tonight. Tell us what you do for a start, Andy. I work at Manchester Airport and I'm, I am an airport coordinator. Well, what does your job entail? It's my job. Airlines approach me oh, re uh, requesting signs <laughs> that they want to operate and I tell them when they can operate. Oh, so it's your fault when we take off later. It is. I cause your delays, Silla. You're responsible. But obviously, that working for an airline, I mean, you get all the perks with the tickets because oh, you've yeah. got this gorgeous tan tonight, haven't you, girl? <laughs> Now, where did you acquire this tan? I've just had a fortnight in uh, Los Angeles. Oh. I came back for a few days, and then I just had a, uh, a week in Gran Canaria, and I got back yesterday. So. Oh. Did you go down to the Baywatch set in Los I Angeles? Did. I, the lads on the Saturday went to hunt uh, Pamela out, but we didn't oh. find her. Oh. But it cheered you up, because you went south of the border, down Mexico I did. way. I travelled down to Mexico and uh, had a look around the street stalls there. And I saw this guy there selling these watches. So I thought, I'll have one of them. And I've got this watch. What oh, happens is... That's the one you're wearing this tonight? Is, this is the one. Very nice. He says it changes with your moods. So it goes yellow for, like, moody, green for happy. And he said blue's the mood for love. Oh. I think it's so. Well, it's been blue since the day I bought it. It's been... <laughs> so I'm either permanently in the mood for love or I've been conned. I don't know which one. Well, I think you're permanently in the mood for love. That's why Let's you're here so. on Blind Date. So enjoy Blind Date, Andy. Thank you, so much. See you in a mo. Wow. <laughs> Hello, James. Hello, Silla. Hello, James. You haven't got a tan, but you look no, ever so smart tonight. No, fortunately not, no. Now, what do you do? I'm a development surveyor. Oh, a development Pray surveyor. So, not yes. very interesting. Yeah, I no, don't no, think no, not to us. No, it isn't. Now, what I find more interesting about you <laughs> is ferrets. Ray, so, so, I thought you'd come onto that one. Because you are more than a ferret fancier. That's correct. How many ferrets have you had in your day? Well, I've had up to four... I've had... A... <laughs> I've had up to 40 ferrets, but at the moment... 40 I've... ferrets? My mum sort of cut me back to four at the moment. Do you haven't got any up your trousers, have you? No, no, I've no. just, just born that way. Because you've... <laughs> James, Thank see you. you in a Hello, Dan. Oh, they like you. They like the last tonight. Hi, Dan. Hello, Silla. How are you? I'm very well. I'm... Oh, how are you? <laughs> I am very, very well. well. What do you do? I'm a medical student, actually, Silla. Oh. Up in Newcastle. Will you listen? Oh, there's somebody in from Newcastle tonight. How long have you been in Newcastle? Well, I've only been there f well, four years now. 
I'm originally from County Antrim in uh, Northern Ireland. Ah. Oh. Small town called Ballymoney. Oh, Ballymoney. Yeah. <laughs> you describe yourself as a bit of a mambo dancer, well, is I that would, right? I would... I wouldn't say I'm Mambo King, Sheila, but I was wondering if you'd um, sort of care to join me. Or... I tell you what, I tell you what, if you show me the steps, because you've got big feet, haven't you, Chuck, for a Mambo? That's dancer. right, yeah, size 12. Size I'm 12, yes, they yeah. look it. They well do. balanced, look at the Well balanced. So, how will teach, teach us? We want to know how this Mambo goes. Okay, well. Um, I need a bit of a catchy tune, so I... A mambo tune? Yeah. Blind yeah. date tune, that's the only tune Sorry, I know. Sorry, I'll join think. with you, that's right. Okay, how fast do you want okay, to go? So I don't... If you just start and I'll go... Da 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 Easy peasy. Well, what can I say? You'll be my teacher, Sheila. No, I won't. No, I won't. But maybe that lady beyond the screens will tonight. Enjoy Blind Date, all three of you. I shall see you all in the mo. Enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> well, one of those three lads will soon be chosen to go on a date. So let's meet the girl who has to make that choice. She's from Blackpool, and her name's Louise. Come in, Louise. Wow. Even better in the flesh. Look. Oh, Louise. Oh, sit down on the... Oh, away. Oh, away. Louise, you look absolutely stunning tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you're from Blackpool. I am. And you, you're very proud of that, aren't I'm you? I'm very proud to be from Blackpool, yes. Yes. Is it true that you've tread the boards and you've once played Snow White? Oh. I did. Oh. On stage. I did. Yes. I played Snow White. Oh, yeah. tell them about when you, you know, you took a bit of the poison apple and then, you know, you died. <laughs> well, I took a bit of the apple and I died fantastically, I thought, yeah. until I opened my eyes and saw the audience instead of the front of the back of the curtain. And I died in the wrong place. Oh. So, so the curtain, I mean, you died out there. Yeah. <laughs> when it should have been here. Yeah, that's right. So you were there, dead on the stage. I was. I how, was. how did you get on? Well, I stood up and went, oops, I'm sorry, I wasn't supposed to die here, and ran off the stage. <laughs> you know, there's many a time I've said that on stage in Blackpool. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to die here. <laughs> But you lived to tell the tale tonight. I did, I did, Heather, I did. Now you've got three questions there, uh -huh. Louise, so uh -huh. fire away with the first one. Right. Hello, boys. Hello, Hello Louise. Louise. Hello, Louise. Right, my first question. My family's claim to fame is that Scylla once sang a song to my dad called <laughs> If I Were a Brownie and You Were a Wolf Cub. <laughs> what? No, it's the other way around, like. When you were a little wolf cub and I was a brownie, we did everything a wolf cub and brownie should do. I remember your dad. I remember that. I wish I'd have known about this. I would have learned the next bit. <laughs> What's your family's claim to fame and why would it impress me? And that goes to number one. Well, hello, Louise. Hello. Um... Unfortunately, my family don't really have a claim to fame, but I'm hoping that after tonight, then maybe my claim to fame will be to have been picked by the best-looking girl ever on Blind Date. Oh. Oh. Nice answer, nice answer. <laughs> right, and that goes to number two. Hi, Louise, how are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. Good. Well, my claim to fame is having the world's fastest ferret. <laughs> <laughs> I might not be as fast as her, but I'm Weasley, the best of the bunch here tonight. Oh. And that question to number three. Hi, Louise, how are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. Good. Um, well, my whole family were in the Cubs and Brownies. So pick me tonight, and I promise to do my best. Scott's honour. <laughs> and my second question. I recently spent a miserable week after having my wisdom teeth out. Oh. If you'd come to visit me, what would you have brought to cheer me up? And that goes to number two. 
God. It's not going to be about Ferris this time, Louise. Good. I'd bring you Desert Connor's greatest hits. It might not cheer you up, but it'll get you out of the house fast. <laughs> Number three. Well, Louise, being a medical student, I'd probably just bring myself and my white coat. Put yourself in my tender care, and remember, doctor knows best. Oh. <laughs> and that question goes to number one. Oh, yeah, Louise. I, um, well, I work at Manchester Airport, so I would get for you two airline tickets to paradise the problem being that the tickets are one-way tickets <laughs> but i can't see this being a problem because once you're there you won't want to return <laughs> Third and final question. right i work for a recruitment agency and applicants need to sell themselves very quickly to succeed so in one line how would you sell yourself to me and make sure I pick you as my blind date? And that goes to number one. Well, being six foot four, I'm not really going to get in your short list, but I might just get in your tall, dark, handsome list. Oh. <laughs> and that question to number two. Well, Louise. When you see my credentials, <laughs> you won't want to bother with these two T-boys when you can have a real whiz kid number two tonight. And that question to number three. Right, Louise. Well, being a typical Irishman, I find it hard to say anything in just one line. But, um... <laughs> If I was pushed, it would have to be, these Irish eyes are smiling, Louise, smiling just for you. Oh, bless. Oh, bless. Well, there you have it, Louise. All three questions asked. Any ideas? Mm, Don't make your mind up just yet, because here's our Graham with a quick recap. Louise, will you choose flighty number one? He says he wants to take you to paradise, but that could be just a tall story. <laughs> or maybe you prefer number two. He's got the potential and he's quite credible. Pity about the ferrets, though. <laughs> and don't forget number three, the good scout with the smiling eyes. He's one doctor you'd never say no to. But the decision is yours. Who are you going to go for? I think I'm going to have to go for number one. Yeah. <laughs> I have a sneaky feeling it was the six foot four That's tall, dark and handsome. That's the one. But look at the two that you turned down. <laughs> First of all, you turned down number two. And that was our ferret man. That was our James from Hampshire. He doesn't look the type to keep uh, ferrets, does he? Must, it must have been the ferrets. Uh, so it was the ferrets, ferrets that ferrets did it. You yes, say? never mind. Never mind. And you don't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You also turned down number three. You turned down our Dan from County Antrim. Come in, Dan. <laughs> our medical student, look, oh. <laughs> I wish you all the very best for your career. Thanks Goodbye, very much. Doctor. Thanks, 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 sir. <laughs> Here's your blind day for this evening. He is tall and he is dark. You chose number one. That was our Andy from Cheshire. Come in, Andy. <laughs> Yes, you see, you are six foot oh, four, yes. tall. 
What do you think of Our Lady in Red? Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. I'll let you know in the morning, Sulla. You will not. You will not, because I'll be chaperoning you all the way. I'll be there. Now, pick a good one. Who's, who's going to choose where you're going on, on your date? Because, I mean, you know, Colorado's gone. That's a fabulous yeah. date. Okay. This one. Go on, Louise. Go on, girl. Go on, girl. Work it, work it, work it. <laughs> A trip to Jamaica. What are you going to be doing? Oh, look at this. You're jetting away to Sandals and the Grill on the wonderful <laughs> island of Jamaica. My goodness, thank you. You'll be sailing on crystal Caribbean seas, snorkeling and scuba diving amongst tropical fish and trying all the water sports at this five-star all-inclusive resort. I'm so pleased is to come back soon and let us know how you get on so you do that, if you can drag yourself away <laughs> ladies and gentlemen Louise and Andy see you soon enjoy enjoy spent their blind date on the romantic island of Cyprus. Hello, welcome on board on the Cyprus service flight. We wish a pleasant stay in Cyprus. Grazie, okay. signora. Spero che sarà un buon viaggio. Italy? But we're going to Cyprus. <laughs> Should we just What's get a takeout pizza instead? Oh that looks good. It was like a brain. <laughs> Here's what we prepared earlier. It's lovely. Chai. Mm. There's a chai. Mm. There's a chai. Mm. There's a chai. Mm. Oh. Here, Candela. Here, Candela. Here, Candela. Here, Candela. Here, Candela. This is really doing your head in, aren't it? Oh, definitely. Oh, Eric Cantona. the bus on Aphrodite. I'll be your ghost of love any day. <laughs> well, it's a marvelous night for a moon dance with the stars above in your eyes. And there's a night to make romance need the cover of a tallest sky. You know, the leaves on the trees are falling. <laughs> Oh, did I? You came before you conquered? Yeah. Well, hello, Emma and Carmelo. Well, they obviously both enjoyed Cyprus, but what did Emma think of Carmelo? Are Eric Cantona look alike? Was it a case of ooh ah or just ooh ah? <laughs> Let's find out. So when the screen went back and I saw Emma, I thought, wow, this is a real stunner, real babe. I thought I'd die and gone to heaven. Come on, I said it like Eric Cantona. And when the screen went back, he did it like Eric Cantona. But unfortunately, I don't fancy Eric Cantona. I walked Emma to her room. I gave her a good, good night peck, which led to a small snow. And then as we were walking away, I was in two minds and I thought to myself, hey, I might have gone a bit too far there. But the second thought was, hey, this is nice. It could lead to uh, more things. 
first night at the airport, um, we were uh, walking to my room. Um, I'd already been to see his room, see if mine like his. It's just a stupid thing. I just wasn't very tired. Um, and so I went back to my room and on the door, as I went in, he gave me a kiss. It wasn't a song, it was just a nice kiss on the lips. Um, but I knew after that kiss that I didn't fancy him. It was more like a friend or brother. I fancied Emma from the first moment I saw her. And as the date progressed, every time I saw her, she looked very, very stunning. And I fancied her even more as the date proceeded. Um, I think Kamala fancied me at the beginning of the day. Um, I'm not so sure now because the signals I was giving back, I think he realised it was purely platonic. I think the best way to win Emma is um, to take it slow. Wine a diner, take her out, have a good time and just shake it gentle. Carmelo was, uh, he was very gentle, he was a very lovely person, but I tend to go for somebody a little bit more, more of a lad, a bit more dominating, somebody that would tell me to shut up when I talk too much. Carmelo really let me get on with it and he didn't really say a lot, he just, you know, and I, I need someone to control me because otherwise I'll completely, like, overpower them. I think Emma likes a man to uh, treat with respect because she's a clever girl, <laughs> lucky. And, um, I don't think the rugged, buffing rugged type is her type. The problem with Carmelo is we went out on a date. Um, I enjoyed the moment of it. Um, this is a very good talker. But I think a couple of days later I've forgotten all about it. If I never saw Emma again, I'd be very disappointed because girls like Emma don't come around very often. At the end of the day, um, Carmelo is a lovely guy, but he's just not exciting enough for me. If I had to compare Emma to a football team, I think I have to compare her to um, the best, the one and only, Man United, because uh, she's definitely the top of my league. Oh, Marmelo, how could you read the signs completely wrong, didn't you, there, Chuck? It seemed uh, they were completely wrong, weren't they? Yes, because you, you thought that, well, our Emma was the type of girl who needed to be wooed. Is that the way you treat every girl, or you just thought that she had this type of personality? No, every, uh, every girl needs to be treated differently. But, uh, well, I got the impression that was the way she wanted to be treated. Yeah. How do you feel now? Um, I don't feel too amazed because, as she said, as she said I, did, I did get the vibes. And um, it was just one-sided, but I did try. <laughs> do you think maybe on the first night after Blind Date that you did steam in a bit too strong, do you think? Because you almost said it there on film that you thought you'd blown it a bit, you know, after that first kiss on the date. Well, I wanted to make a... I don't know, not about making a point. I just wanted to try, at least. If I didn't, if I didn't do anything on the first night, then she would have thought, oh, oh, he's not interesting at all. I mean, she didn't class me as exciting, but that would have been worse, wouldn't it? But do you think, Emma, do you mm. think, I mean, he's Mr. Charlie Charm himself and a perfect gentleman, and you said in your own words that you like a bit of a Jax the Lad. Is that what put you off right from the start, that he was the perfect gentleman? Um, I have to admit, um, I'm a lovely guy. I can't praise him enough. He's gorgeous, but... Um, I don't know. I think because... No offence, I didn't actually fancy Carmelo. I think any approach he would have taken, whether it be the rough or bullshit, or whether it be the gentleman, um, it wouldn't make any difference. Purely for that reason, I didn't fancy him. That's an horrible way to do it. What a shame. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. Whatever. I hope you find happiness, mm. whatever you do. And thank you both very much for coming back on Blind Date. So. You, you deserve so the best, I have to say, Carmel. And the best is out there <coughs> waiting for you. I hope so. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Emma and Carmel. Charlie and Joe and Louise and Andy enjoy themselves. And of course, we'll be arranging lots more blind dates. So until then, ta for now. ta everyone. ta -ra! Well, next tonight, Matthew Kelly's back with the first in a brand new series of Stars in Their Eyes.